Hello everyone and welcome back to Deciphering Weather. In today's video, we'll discuss Beryl, Invest 94L, and the remnants of Chris, with Beryl plowing through the Caribbean islands this morning with destructive force, and where it's going to be heading over the next five to seven days through the Caribbean, bringing impacts along the way. If you like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. So we're looking at the latest satellite image of the Atlantic Basin thanks to TropicalTibits.com for Monday, July 1st, 2024. The purple arrows pointed towards the remnants of Tropical Storm Chris, now over in inland in Mexico. Black is Major Hurricane uh, Beryl with 150 mile per hour winds moving into the Eastern Caribbean after making landfall just north of uh, Grenadine uh, this morning, Grenada, sorry. And then in pink, we have Invest 96L struggling a little bit. And then red, we have another tropical wave coming off the coast of Africa. Here's the vorticity and energy, the spin in the atmosphere of our tropical en entities that we are tracking. And here is the close-up view of Category 4 Hurricane Barrel. And you can see how it made landfall earlier this morning. Uh, through just north of Grenada and now is in the Eastern Caribbean, went through an eye wall replacement cycle last night. So it temporarily weakened to category three hurricane, but then this morning around eight o'clock was re uh, went through that eye wall replacement cycle and uh, re-strengthened to a category four of 130 miles an hour. And now we're at 150 miles an hour as that uh, eye wall continues to collapse and strengthen and circle itself even tighter. It's moving west-northwest at 20 miles an hour, so very quickly. Uh, and like I said, we have winds of 150 miles per hour. We have hurricane warnings in effect for Jamaica and tropical storm, I'm sorry, hurricane watches in pink. And we have tropical storm watches in effect for Haiti and the Dominican Republic as the outer bands of this storm could bring some tropical force winds to your region on the south side of the island. Here's the key messages from the National Hurricane Center. You can pause this to take a chance to read it, but on the left is in English and on the right is in Spanish. So we're going to see this west-northwest, maybe even northwest directly path of the storm of Beryl for the next 24 to 48 hours because a very strong storm will push up against that Bermuda Azores high, but also there's going to be a weakness in that Bermuda Azores high, and I'll show you that on the models. And then from there, it's going to encounter another stronger high pressure system over the United States, and that's going to force it to go more westward towards the Yucatan Peninsula. Uh, but there's some variation in there, and then depending on the timing and how fast the storm moves and the strength of the storm, potentially could curve up towards South Texas in about seven days time but that's still uncertain uh, we'll show you what could happen with that in the models models are also going to show you the wide range of intensity that we could see with this storm and you can see it's going to maintain tropical i mean category four uh, strength for the next couple of days uh, but then from there, it really wiles verily, maintaining category, uh, merge, hurricane, uh, major hurricane status or dipping into a regular hurricane or even tropical storm by the time we get to the end of this week. Here's the remnants of Tropical Storm Chris, which was briefly a tropical storm before making landfall overnight last night. And National Hurricane Center no longer issuing advisories for this storm as it's now over inland and a remnant and dissipated itself. But we do see threats of rainfall from this system as it continues to move inland. And then here we have the close-up view of 96L, which is struggling to develop at the moment. It's encountering some wind shear and sucking in some Saharan air layer. Uh, so you can see how the thunderstorms are pretty much to the south and east of this developing low pressure system. Uh, but it's going to take a primer, uh, similar track to what Barrel's taken. So uh, same islands, maybe a little bit further to the north uh, because of the weakness in that high pressure as it continues westward and west-northwest. 
but it's got about a 50% chance based on these models of becoming a tropical storm or not forming at all. So over the next two days, the National Hurricane Centers lowered the chances to 20% and 50% over the next seven days. So let's see where Barrel and Invest 96L head over the next seven days and explain the trajectory and also the strength of the storm as we go. So here's the GFS 850 millibar cyclonic vorticity. Again, that's the spin and energy in the atmosphere, a thousand feet up from the surface. Black is barrel, pink is 96L. Here we're looking at the cyclonic potential velocity. Uh, what this is, basically anything in light blue is favorable environment for tropical development. And then that yellow is an upper level trough called a tut. And that increases the wind shear in the Caribbean. So as you can see, that's where barrel is heading. And we're going to encounter that wind shear in starting at around 24 hours from now, as you can see on this wind shear map here. And then as this storm goes through, it's depending on a couple of things can happen. The strength of the storm could push this tut out of the way and completely erode it or could get destroyed completely by this tut and erode away at its thunderstorms, weaken this very quickly back down to a tropical storm potentially. And a lot of that would be due to those thunderstorms potentially being eroded away and sucking in a lot of this dry air surrounding the storm, which is right now being protected by its upper level ridge. Now that uh, more northwest direction that the storm could take is because of the weakness in the ridge. So you can see here we have an, a trough, a cold front coming off the east coast of the United States. So the Bermuda Azores high over the Atlantic is temporarily weakened and we have high pressure behind it over Texas and the southeast United States. So that's going to allow this storm, because of how strong it is, to move a little bit more northwest uh, in a direction over the next 24 to 40 hours, and then we'll see it turn westward after that. So you can see here, this is the time frame on Wednesday, July 3rd, where it's going to start to move westward. We have the trough that's already moving to its north and west, uh, north and east, I should say. Uh, you can see also in pink, we have Invest 96L still as an open wave not developing on this model run. And that's because it's encountering more wind shear from the outflow from Barrel as the storm continues plowing through the Caribbean. But you can see on the GFS model, the strength of the storm, even though it's no longer a Category 4 on this model run on by Wednesday, is still pushing away that upper level trough. So it's trying to make the environment more favorable for it to continue moving through. But there's also, depending on how far north it goes, we'll encounter the mountains of Haiti and Hispaniola, and then also Jamaica if it goes close enough to it as well. Not to say that there won't be any wind shear. The wind shear will still be present, but depending on how much it can erode away at that trough will determine how much wind shear it's going to encounter, but there's still some that's going to weaken this storm as we go along. So it won't maintain Category 4, but still could be a hurricane as we go through. And you can see here on the GFS model run, it does encounter some of that wind shear. So it does ingest some of that dry air, a weakening those thunderstorms. So it's up to a 987 millibar low pressure system instead of the 940s where it is now. But you can see at this time on Wednesday the 3rd, that high pressure over the southeast United States will latch onto this storm and keep it pushing to, further to the south at this point and westward. So by the time we get to Saturday, July 6th, depending on the exact path of the storm, it could be in this position, it could be a little bit further to the north, or it could be over the Yucatan Peninsula if it slows down a little bit from the weakness of that a high pressure system not being as strong as the Azores high. We see Invest 96L hasn't developed still. We also are tracking another upper level low that's going to be pinching off from that cold front that could uh, become something subtropical, so we'll keep an eye on that as well. 
and you can see here that we'll have that upper level trough just to the west of barrel once it's in the Gulf of Mexico. You can see it better here on the 200 millibar uh, streamline event here, highlighted in black. But that's going to increase the wind shear then at that point once it's in the Gulf from the south up to the northwest, northeast. <clears throat> so that's going to cause it to weaken even further potentially. So a lot more dry air could ingest into the storm. GFS is saying that this will be a tropical storm in the Gulf of Mexico, no longer a hurricane. But the interesting part will be the timing of this event with the moving of the high pressure system of the southeast off the east coast of the United States and another uh, trough building just behind it that could allow barrel to potentially move the where it depending on where it ends up in the Gulf of Mexico when it enters if it's in this position on the GFS model most likely would still be heading towards Mexico but get very close to the uh, Rio Grande Valley if it's a little bit further to the north say north of the Yucatan Peninsula as it's entering the Gulf of Mexico potentially more of the Texas coastline could be at risk so you can see here, by the time we get to day seven on July 8th, GFS model wants to take it right to the border of Texas and Mexico at the Rio Grande River. Now, if we look at the hurricane models, this is the half SA. And you can see how it stayed pretty strong up until it got to Jamaica and then substantially weakened at that point after going through and over the island down to uh, a hurricane just category one then crossed the Yucatan and lost a lot of steam there going over land for about 24 hours and then emerged as a tropical storm on the other side of the Gulf of Mexico here's the B version of that model and you can see it starts as a very strong hurricane as well like we saw today gets very close to Jamaica crosses the Yucatan Peninsula a more southern track than the A version and enters the Gulf of Mexico in the Bay of Campeche region but then we also have the latest information coming from the hurricane reconnaissance aircraft and you can see how then as this was going through and I was making this video the last observation was this storm was down to a 948 millibar low pressure system. Now the hurricane model that best described that was the H wharf showing a 945 at their initial uh, initialization on this model run from this morning. And you can see it stays stronger and takes a more northwest track over the northern portions of the Yucatan Peninsula. And if that's the case, then it's in a prime position to potentially with that weakening in the ridge behind that uh, high pressure system could continue moving a little bit further into the texas coastline north of the rio grande valley and maybe even points further north so corpus christi maybe even uh, as far north as houston depending on how weak that ridge gets or how strong this storm goes and too many factors, but that's a possibility at the moment. Here's the total accumulation of precipitation that we could see over the next seven days. Obviously, the track that you see from Barrel could shift north or south, depending on the exact path that it takes. And anywhere in those purples, we're talking two to six inches of rain. Yellows, we're talking a foot or more. And then, of course, the depending on where the storm goes, if you're on the right front quadrant of the the hurricane or tropical storm depending on when it comes through you'll see those strongest waves coming through as well so here's the ensemble models showing the projected path of our two systems over the next seven days and you can see the widespread in black of where barrel can go which could be just around Houston or all the way down towards Mexico uh, continuing a very more westward track or could curve up towards Texas in seven days as well so all those are in the possibility so anywhere from Houston southward across the Texas border 
into Mexico is in the path of barrel over the next seven days. So we considered minor category four hurricane barrel as it continues to move through the Eastern Caribbean into the Central Caribbean and the Western Caribbean and then the Gulf of Mexico and we'll see where it goes from there and how strong it is. And we'll track 96L to see if it has any chance of becoming our next name system, which would be Debbie. As a reminder, we have super thanks available on Deciphering Weather. So I'd like to give a shout out to Emily, Mia Strong, and Darcy for donating to yesterday's uh, video. So thank you very much. And if you'd like to donate to the channel, please go down to the heart button where it says thanks. Thank you for watching this video. If you liked it, please hit the like button and leave a comment. Please share this video with your family and friends on social media. And if you knew and like detailed weather breakdowns, hit the subscribe button and notification bell to get all of my upcoming videos. Thank you and have a great day.